And welcome back. We are reading chapter 10 of Henry Berry, Vimy Rich Survivor, which is entitled Same Old, Same Old. When Henry returned, his unit was back in billets, so he repeated this, the routine all over. Starting September 21st, he stayed in billets for a full month. He would review the pictures of the German trenches every day, clean his equipment, and go to church every Sunday. He then went back to the routine of a week on the front lines, support lines, and billets. When he was on the front lines, it was an airplane guard. Support lines were practicing rifle shooting, bayonet usage, and putting on the gas mask. Billets were helping farmers harvest, building barracks, cleaning equipment, and listening to lectures. General Curry would come and inspect them once a month. They did this routine every single day from September 21st to 1917 to March 27, 1918, and it got cold. It was so cold that everything froze. The guns would freeze, the airplanes wouldn't fly, they had to put their tins in the fire just to eat the food in them, and they were licking ice blocks for water or eating snow. They had over eight inches of snow in the trenches, and even the rats were getting scarce. Nobody talked anymore. It was just survival. And Henry hadn't seen or heard of Jimmy for almost a year now. He would tear up at night sometimes, wondering if Jimmy was even alive. He could tell the differences between the British, Australian, and Canadians, though. The Canadians just seemed to deal with the winter better than others. Henry didn't even think of going home anymore. The letters were becoming scarcer. The previous year, Henry would get a letter every couple weeks. Now he would get a letter once a month. He continued to read his Bible every day and say in his prayers. Henry wrote, Jesus really is my best friend now. He is the only one who is with me every single day. On a really lonely day, I got a letter from my neighbor, Miss May White, in September and decided to write her back when I was in billets, somewhere in France, November 24th, 1917. Miss May White, dear friend, just a few lines to answer your welcome letter I received a long time ago. You will have to excuse my delay as we've been pretty busy this last few months. I believe it was on a Sunday night you wrote. I suppose you would be sitting up waiting for someone to come along. Hee ho, there's nothing like it, kid. And they, of course, and they say, of course, I wouldn't know. I saw that your mother has moved to Ottawa. Was she there for the fall fair? Well, this is three falls. I've missed the fairs. Now, I hope I'll be back there for them next fall. Won't I put in some time if I am, eh? We are out of the line and staying in a little village. This is the third time I've tried to write this letter, but it's terribly cold and my fingers aren't working right. Well, I suppose Jimmy will be coming home very soon. I bet he'll be married soon, just like the rest of them back there. I guess I will need to bring a ring back with me when I come. Hey, ha ha. Well, I think I will ring off for this time. Hope this finds you all well at home. From your old friend, Henry. Henry went on to say, the best part, though, is I do see the 130 lads every once in a while when I'm in billets. Jimmy had joined the 75th Battalion, who we replaced in the Red Line. Some of the 130 guys told me he had been shot last March before Vimy Ridge during patrol and hadn't been seen since. However, on January 31st, I saw him again when the 75th and the 38th were on parade for General Watson of the 4th Division. A couple weeks later, I had the afternoon off, so I went to see him in billets. He told me that it took him almost five months to recover from the gunshot wound to his arm. He was still game, but he was looking much older and was constantly rubbing that arm. When I asked him how he was doing, Jimmy replied, I just wish I'd get some really solid sleep. I can't get settled and my arm is always hurting and waking me up. I just wonder how much longer this is going to be. Henry replied, I know. It's been almost three years now. Thankfully, I know Nettie is still waiting for me. Jimmy asked, is she right? Henry said, not really, but her food comes in the Institute's gift packages for Christmas. 
And Ma has said she still comes over and asks about me. Ma seems to think she really misses me. Jimmy replied, you're a lucky man, Henry. It will be my honor to be your best man.